Hey guys, if you've been wondering where I was for the past week and a half, I've been working at my new job, moving into my new apartment, and playing this old game, Thracia 776. My internetless life has been consumed by this game, trying to understand its bizarre gameplay. I was requested to make a support science on Pern, or Pan by the translation, and after a grueling monster arc, I finally made it past chapter 12x. Pern's two chapter arc begins at 12 and ends at 12x. Relative to his peers in the game, there's a decent amount of depth to him. He makes for an interesting combat unit as well. He comes with the King Sword, which is a souped up brave sword with a 20% crit chance and has built in charm into it. He has vantage and soul to boot in his base kit as well. He also has 5 movement stars, giving him a 25% chance to move again after he performs an action, and has a pursuit critical coefficient of 5. And for those unfamiliar with the ladder mechanic, it's a hidden number that multiplies a unit's crit chance upon a follow-up attack. So in Pern's case, if he has a 20% chance to crit from the King Sword, his follow-up will be a 100% chance to crit. Pern is the leader of the Dandelion Gang, a group of Robin Hoods operating deep within the Dacia Forest in Northern Thracia. Pern's actions have given him a positive reputation among the villagers he's worked with and helped. He's described as a righteous leader from August, Leaf's chief advisor. And aside from Kulho, a brigand who rebels against Pern in Chapter 12, the significant characters of the gang, Trude, Tina, and Salem, are all good people. Given that Thrasia doesn't have support conversations, Pern's characterization only develops in these two chapters. So this video serves as a spotlight. It will analyze his dialogue between Salem, Trude, Tina, Lyphus, and Lara, and explore what kind of man Pern really is behind his noble reputation. Is he really just the run-of-the-mill Robin Hood? Chapter 12 introduces Pern with Salem, a former Lobto, the evil cult who wants to bring back Loptir, servant who questioned the ways of the Order, then was branded a traitor and left for dead until Pern saved his life. The two men discuss the recent growth of the gang, including the induction of some bad apples who value banditry, like Kulho and his boys. Pern expresses a desire to cut ties with Kulho, and then explains that all he really needs is Salem, Trude, and Tina. The conversation ends with Pern leaving Salem to his guard duty, but expresses wariness of the Imperial Army stomping on their front door. Here, Pern is established as a good and noble person. In fact, the game intentionally paints him out to be a generic Fire Emblem good guy, while Kolho is the generic Fire Emblem evil guy. But once 12x is unlocked, the player will quickly notice that Pern may not be as generically good as he was propped up to be in the cutscene just before. 12X begins with Pern and Trude preparing for the worst as they believe the Imperial Army has killed Salem and broken through their doors. After Trude departs to defend the mansion, Pern tells Tina, a young cleric, what's happening. Upon hearing the news of the army's invasion, Tina cracks a devious smile. Pern suspects that she's actually plotting her escape, and tells her that there's no way that he's letting go of a good and useful slave like her. For context, Tina wields the Steel Staff, a long-range steel which understandably is very useful for someone like Pern. She begs him to set her free, but he responds angrily by threatening her not to leave or else he'd do those terrible things to her again. This terrifies the young girl, who then quickly begs for forgiveness. Accompanying Pern from his throne room is a dancer on one side and Tina on the other. And upon starting the chapter, one realizes that Leaf is fighting in a poorly lit mansion, filled with thieves, mercenaries, and female dancers. The dialogue exchanged here is creepy. Here's Pern, a tired looking rogue with a good public image, but behind closed doors, has slaves and forces this young girl to do his bidding. The opening dialogue shows that his morals may align closer to Kulho than what was established one chapter prior. The unique chapter opening dialogue with Lyphus, Salem, and Lara also add onto the moral ambiguity of Pern. Salem, if captured in the previous chapter, offers to talk to Pern and try to get him to understand Leaf's cause and that he isn't part of the Imperial Army. Lara explains that she used to be a slave forced to dance with a traveling group of entertainers, but Pern rescued her and brought her to Manster. On the flip side, Lyphus, the sly and skillful thief who used to lead a gang of pirates, shrivels up just at the thought of Pern. He asks Leaf if he can be switched out with someone else, and begs August to consider his request but it's rejected. On one hand, Pern's a hero, yet on the other, he has slaves, and resorts to tormenting those beneath him to get what he wants. Both of these sides of Pern, the good and the bad, 
are explored through his recruitment conversations with Salem, Lyphis, and Lara. Additionally, more details of Pern are revealed through Tina and Safi's, her big sister's, talk conversation. Let's begin with Salem. Salem tells Pern to fight for Leaf's Liberation Army, explaining that they all have the same ideals. Pern trusts what Salem is saying and changes sides. While straightforward, the amount of trust Pern puts into Salem shows that not only does he value him even though they just met, but also that he values what Leaf is fighting for, to fight for the freedom of the people of Thrasia and to stick it to the Empire. Lara's recruitment conversation with Pern takes a more intense and personal direction. Pern, surprised that Lara is even here, jokingly asks her if she missed him so much that she came back to him. She seriously answers that she may have done that exact thing. So Pern dismisses her and tells her to go back to Manster. The conversation then becomes romantically charged. Remember, Lara used to be a dancer until Pern rescued her. But she says that at the time, she thought Pern liked her dancing. Pern clarifies on his attraction to her. He did find her dancing very eye-catching, but then he realized that she was still a kid. They briefly talk about Lara's passion for dancing and how her moves cheer up and energize her audience. Pern encourages her to start dancing once more, and if she does, he'll vow to join Leaf's Liberation Army. In part to make Lara happy, but also in realization that he can't be a thief forever, and that the prospect of the liberation of the northern continent from the empire he detests is something that he finds too fun to pass up. Pern's morals are questionable yet again. He certainly loves his dancers, and it's safe to say that he either pays pretty pennies to see them dance, or enslaves them to do it. And you know, depending on how you want to interpret dancer in Kaga's video games, probably some other stuff. But at the same time, his moral line was crossed when he realized that Lara was a kid at the time and ended up rescuing her and sending her off to Manster, a location in northern Thracia far from where she was probably rescued. Pern is motivated to join her army because he wants her to be happy. She has romantic feelings for him, but he doesn't prey on those feelings in the name of self-interest. He does it because he wants what's best for her. And on a side note, it's also pretty nifty that Lara literally promotes into a dancer from this conversation alone. These personal conversations between Salem and Lara indicate that Pern really is a loyal and righteous man. But now for the elephants in the room. His history with Lyphis and that conversation with Tina. Upon Lyphis talking to Pern, he's filled with immediate regret and fear. Bashful, Lyphis curses in regret for the situation you, the player, put him in. Pern notices his presence and quickly realizes that the guy quivering in his boots is indeed Lyphis, his childhood punching bag. You haven't changed at all since you were a kid, have you? Have you at least learned not to wet your bed? You were the biggest crybaby in the village and you were always being bullied by the other guys. It seems like it was yesterday. Yeah, it gets worse. Not only was Lephis bullied by Pern's peers, Pern himself was always the one who picked on him first. After Lephis mentions this exact thing under his breath, Pern just decides to join Lephis and to fight for the Liberation Army. Lephis is shaken and surprised, but Pern insists that it will be just like the old days. Lephis then mutters under his breath, if he's really going to be stuck with Pern again. Yeah, this is one of the silliest recruitments in the game. It's downright comedic. Pern was built up to be this morally ambiguous scoundrel slash hero, and the reality was that Pern was really just an asshole sometimes. He simply bullied Lyphis when they were young. That's literally it. But Pern holds no ill will towards Lyphis anymore, and willfully joins the army just because it sounds like a fun thing to do, and so he can shoot the shit with him. Of course, Pern does believe in the cause, but the flippant and fancy-free delivery of these lines is hilarious. However, in the ending cutscene of 12X, Lyphis warns Leaf that Pern's done some terrible things. It still leaves Pern's morality up in the air. What exactly did he do to him? What exactly was he going to do to Tina? The answer may shock you. Prepare yourself. You thought Camilla threatening Jacob and Laszlo was dark. You thought Perry's murderous tendencies were out of line. You thought Valter was insane? To force Tina to use her staff, Pern would put giant bugs on her face to scare her. Seriously. This is the extent of Pern's torture. Granted, he exploited Tina's fear of bugs and made a little girl do his bidding, 
But the fear is so ridiculous that Safi, her big sister that's been worried about her all this time, says, I told you so, that this is the kind of stuff that happens when she ignores her sister's advice and that she hopes she learned her lesson. This reveal is made even more silly when the conversation quickly transitions from this buildup of Pern's torture methods to Tina chatting about how sexy Leaf is. The conversation comically ends with a now irritated Safi telling her little sister that she basically isn't in the mood for her right now. Even though he clearly didn't emotionally or mentally scar Tina with his giant bug method, he, for all intents and purposes, enslaved Tina to do what he wanted. And it's never certain that the dancers he has in his mansion are here on their own free will. It could be either one. But I guess that's left to the interpretation of the player. He's kind but cruel. Wise but impulsive. He's willing to stick his neck out for his friends and even strangers. He puts a lot of stock in trust and loyalty. But at the same time, he's selfish, arrogant, and abusive. To put it simply, this King Sword wielding Robin Hood is a good dude, but he's a total douche too.